All right, so I am now going to introduce assignment two. We just finished our fantasy landscape and submitted it. For assignment two, we're going to practice those same compositing skills and techniques, but we're going to place it all into one creature. And what can be really helpful is to have an idea of an anatomy that actually works first. All um, fantasy creatures are based on things that already exist. And so I really like the example of Pokemon as a way of just looking at strange kind of fantasy combinations of shapes in the real world. So take this guy, for instance. I could see how he's a combination of, of a beetle and of a rhinoceros and of an aardvark and of a toad. And I could kind of start to imagine making my own creature with that as a, a head start. Now, I was interested in doing a bird. I've never uh, demonstrated a bird for this. And I was interested in one of these kind of golden birds And I looked at these three kind of flying type Pokemon that are all legendary Pokemon. And I wanted to combine some of the best uh, features from all of them. So I did my research. And so your first step is to start doing your research, find animals that you can be interested in. So where we're going to start is by saving an image of something to inspire us. Maybe it's even a combination of some different Pokemon. And we can even just do it with an image search. So I might look up legendary bird Pokemon. See what kind of images I get. So this is a, a nice combined image to inspire me. And that will inform my sketch. Oh, this is pretty nice too. Now the important reason for kind of looking at sketches first, it's a nice viewpoint, is that in order to do a creature, it's not just a combination of textures. Each creature like in this very nice digital art example, digital painting. Each creature has to have an anatomy that makes sense, where connections feel believable, and that it feels like the, the wings in this case really connect with the rib cage, which really connects to a pelvis with legs that could really support its weight and is counterbalanced by a tail and that the head pivots and, and connects with that spine in a way that's believable. So looking at all of that, I'm going to try to sketch out what I want my creature to look like. So this would just be in your sketchbook. Just like we sketched out for our landscape, this time we're going to sketch for a creature. So I'm going to create a new Photoshop file because I'll sketch digitally. This will be my assignment to sketch. And I like to call these creature collages. But I think of them almost more like taxidermy. Because we're going to be taking believable pieces and putting them in together into a new creative whole. I'll make a new layer so I can sketch on top of white. And I'm going to just use black brush. And I want to be informed by a Pokemon or some such idea. So maybe I'll put this up in the corner. Uh, Photoshop. So setting up your 
your sketchbook so that you're looking at some reference on your screen but we're sketching before we've found any actual source material we're just sketching for inspiration so we're making it even more and more our own project see if it will work for me now. So I got my brush, I'm doing it on a new blank layer on top of white. And what I want to sketch is maybe the pose for my creature. So I like this kind of crane neck for my imaginative bird. So that's the head, that's the cranium. I have the spine, it goes into a rib cage that needs to be big and broad enough to support wings. And I'm not copying it exactly from any one picture, but I'm looking at this head and how that neck goes in. And I'm thinking, okay, this head, maybe I want that to be from a heron or a crane. The beak, maybe I want to make the beak from something more exotic. I don't know. These are just ideas right now. They're going to help me look for the reference I want. Maybe a toucan. And I think what I want to add to this that none of uh, these images have for the Pokemon designs is just as much kind of bright color as possible. Birds are nice because they have all of this plumage, especially at the transition. So like at the neck, this might be uh, some sort of colorful rough. And then I want some sort of headdress or even maybe horns or feathers coming off of the head. I might even look to some weird sources for that. Instead of flames, maybe I'll use something like coral or even uh, flowers. Maybe around the eye. So as you're sketching, start thinking about what reference you could use to kind of make that believable. Now for the legs, I don't want these crane-like legs. I want something really powerful. I'm kind of more inspired by these kind of talons. And I want those legs to have a really strong shape and presence. So more like an eagle. But I also need them to connect with the anatomy. And that's another reason why we chest, uh, sketch. So this is the front of the chest here. The pelvis is down here. And I need to have these legs connect in a believable way. Which for a bird means going kind of back and then forward and then angling into the talons. I get to decide the lengths of those things in my sketch. And that's what I will match up to. And the reason we use a sketchbook and we use pencil is so that we can erase, kind of refine our, our decisions. So that talent might take a slightly different shape. And of course, this is all going to be helped by the reference I find. So I'm refining my sketch as I go. So now that flows through to a tail. And I want the tail to, to help show the form and show all my colors. So my tail might be fanned out like this. And I might take that from, from birds, but maybe also from tropical fish that have kind of fanned tails and lots of color. And then the wings, very important for flying creatures, that the wings feel believable. I have to look at how bird's wings actually work. In fact, I might even have to expand my canvas size a little bit here so I can draw them all in. And bird's wings are basically like your upper arm here, your lower arm here, and then all the muscles of, or the bones of your hand here. 
to give you the pin feathers. So I want to make sure that's all represented clearly. I don't like that quite so much. Maybe more like this to this. So sketching here is much more creative. Much more about getting what you want to sp spend time working on than being a slave to reference you find. Because we're trying to create a believable creature that can move and have anatomy and structure to it. Now, what will I use for this body? Well, I think I'm probably going to use a uh, golden eagle for the wings and the body and then maybe I'll play with different colors and different textures but I know that that's a big powerful chest and big powerful wings with really nice shapes though not a whole lot of color so the goal is to have a composite creature plan like this sketched out before you start looking for reference and it needs to combine at least five separate sources. So I have more than five already, and I'll have, probably have well more than five by the time I'm done. But that's the idea. Yeah, there's something about that doesn't work. Let's see. There we go, like that. So it'll really help you kind of get your angles, get everything to work. Now when you're doing a fantasy creature with multiple heads, or you're doing a fantasy creature that has arms and wings, you have to make sure that that makes sense in the anatomy. So if I was going to do that, I would try to connect the wings with more like the, uh, the shoulder blades, and then have another collarbone here where I could have the arms coming out and make that believable. Like so, but I've never liked how those kind of creatures worked. So I'm gonna stick to more of a classic bird anatomy even though there's no bird that looks just like this. Okay, so then I save my sketch. And then I start looking for reference. And just like with assignment one, you want to do a Google image search, but you want to limit your size to 10 megapixels or bigger. And I might start with the wings, which I know are going to be the hardest thing. Because I don't want just parts of wings, I want the whole structure. And it has to be not only kind of lit in a way that is adaptable, but it also needs to be large enough. And it needs to be a shape like my sketch that really shows, shows off the whole um, structure and anatomy of the creature. You don't want just a shape that's a blob. So that's pretty good. Problem is it's cropped off, but that's a good start. And I want to check the reference, make sure it's good enough quality. Wings moving are always going to be a little, or are likely going to be a little out of focus. That's okay. They might be the, the, under, the under layers for some better images. That's a nice sharp wing there. Good detail. So you start finding your component parts. And using your sketch to kind of understand, okay, I have the, the head facing that way. So I want some, some good reference of the side of birds' heads. 